Hello, my name is Victoria Stinnett, and I am a senior technologist at the Johns Hopkins Study Genomics Laboratory. My presentation is titled, Adoption of Optical Genome Mapping in a Clinical Cancer Cytogenetics Laboratory, a Stepwise Approach. I have nothing to disclose for this talk. In this presentation, I will discuss the current cytogenetic testing used in our laboratory and its limitations, the benefits to optical mapping, and the analysis results and conclusions from our own optical mapping pilot study. Cytogenetic testing is especially important for oncology specimens because abnormalities can determine a specific treatment course. Some findings can also be used as prognostic indicators and predict future relapse. Current conventional cytogenetics includes chromosome analysis, FISH, and chromosomal microarray. Chromosome analysis is genome-wide, but is subjective and cannot detect small or cryptic rearrangements. FISH is only for probe-specific regions. Adding probes will increase the coverage, but will be more time-consuming and expensive. Microarray is able to look at small copy number changes across the genome, but cannot detect balanced rearrangements such as translocations or inversions. Optical genome mapping technology aims to address many of these concerns. It is high throughput, high resolution imaging that covers the whole genome and is able to detect copy number changes and balanced structural rearrangements, even when present at low frequencies. Different companies are offering this technology. The workflow displayed is an example from BioNanogenomics' Sapphire system, which was utilized for our pilot study. To summarize, high molecular weight DNA is isolated and specific sequences are labeled across the genome. The labeled DNA is transferred to a cartridge for scanning Cartridges are loaded and DNA is linearized in image to scan the whole genome. Algorithms convert images to molecules, which are cross-mapped to a reference genome. Five samples were examined for this study from bone marrow, blood, and fresh tumor tissue. Samples were blinded and the optical mapping assay was performed by BioNanogenomics. Then the analysis and interpretation was done in our laboratory. After analysis, we retrospectively compared the optical mapping findings with the previously reported sage genetics results. These five cases were chosen because they had remaining material suitable for optical mapping and they represented a variety of sage genetic abnormalities. An overview of each case is included in the table. They had normal and abnormal karyotypes, including a simple and more complex rearrangement. Fish findings included three fusions and a heterozygous and homozygous loss in case three. Case four represents a patient after sex mismatch transplant with patient and donor cells both identified by FISH, karyotype, and microarray. Large and small copy changes were found by microarray, which ranged in frequency from very high in case three to very low in case two. Overall, these cases cover numerical and structural variants at different frequencies. Take note of the first two cases, which only showed abnormalities with one methodology. All other tests were reported as normal. It's possible these abnormalities could have been missed if that particular testing method had not been ordered by the clinician. The samples were run with the BioNano rare variant analysis on the Sapphire system, which yielded data from the structural variant and copy number variant pipelines. The typical cutoffs for each pipeline are listed. Specifically, the SV pipeline detects small size changes with lower allele fraction variants, whereas the CNV pipeline is better equipped at finding whole arm, terminal, and centromeric breakpoints. The image displayed is an example of a circus plot. Chromosome bands are displayed on the outside, the red band indicates the centromere. Copy number changes and findings are noted on the intersections with structural variant breakpoints displayed as connecting lines in the very center. One of the benefits of optical mapping is the high resolution able to detect small copy number changes and variants. However, that means a lot of data is produced. For example, our five samples produced over 400 calls that needed to be reviewed for significance. Interpretation can be very time consuming which can be problematic for a clinical lab that has to be concerned with turnaround time for many samples or for smaller labs with fewer technicians. To address this, we developed and performed a stepwise approach to analysis. First, we filtered all calls by size. All calls greater than or equal to 250 KB were flagged for review. We evaluated all structural variants, such as translocations and gene fusions. Then we included all calls that contained significant known cancer genes, even if they fell below our original size cutoff. This substantially reduced the calls for review to 89, a 78% reduction. Each call was then examined for size, genes involved, and the percent allele fraction to estimate significance. After analysis, we compared the calls to previous findings. 18 corresponded to the cytogenetics results, and 71 additional calls were not previously identified. I'll briefly review the case findings. 
Case 1 is a 28-year-old male with AML. The only significant finding was fusion of NUC98 and SD1 by FISH, shown here in the surface plot. For simplicity, only chromosomes 5, 11, and 15 are displayed. Microarray and optical mapping also showed 15Q duplication consistent with the common BP1, BP2 breakpoints, considered germline. Case 2 is an 80-year-old male with concern for CLL, with normal karyotype and FISH panels, but abnormal microarray. The microarray findings were present at a very low frequency, approximately 10% or less, and showed gain of 6P, copy neutral loss of heterozygosity for 6Q, and loss of chromosome Y, as well as interstitial abnormalities on chromosomes 2 and 11. These regions were identified by a wider B allele frequency, but had no appreciative change in log R, and therefore we cannot definitively identify the type of abnormality by microarray. The circus plot shows loss of Y, no large abnormalities on chromosome 6, but several structural variations for chromosomes 2 and 11, emphasized in the right circus plot. When we examined the optical mapping breakpoints, they correlated with the abnormal regions identified by microarray. Whole chromosome microarray plots for 2 and 11 are displayed on the right. It is difficult to see with this whole chromosome view, but the B allele frequency plots at the top show interstitial regions with wider heterozygous calls with no change in log R below. These are very subtle changes and were identified visually as they were below the detection limit of software. The black brackets here show all the abnormal regions identified by microarray, and the red arrows represent translocation events identified by optical mapping. These findings indicate a possible chromothripsis-like event for these chromosomes. This may be relevant for this patient, as chromothripsis has been indicated in the prevalence of genomic instability in high-risk relapsed refractory CLL cases. Case 3 is a 58-year-old male with BALL. Optical mapping successfully identified the cytogenetic abnormalities. Here's the bcr abel fusion, identified by FISH in the circus plot, as well as the deletions on chromosome 9 and chromosome 12, visible in this inner ring. It also revealed a possibly significant partial deletion of XBP1, later confirmed by NGS. This gene may have potential treatment implications as a novel therapeutic target to overcome drug resistance in pre-BALL. I want to take a minute to address a potential discrepancy between the cytogenic results for this case. First, no abnormalities were detected by karyotype, but the mitotic index was very low, yielding an insufficient number of cells for analysis, and therefore it is likely the abnormal clone was not present in culture. Second, FISH identified homozygous loss of CDKN2A and heterozygous loss of ETV6. Microarray showed mosaic loss for the entire short arms of these chromosomes and a higher frequency change within these regions, suggestive of clonal homozygous loss. The microarray plots to the left show the approximate locations of CDKN2A and ETV6, which map within these regions of interest. You can appreciate the similarities between plots and that the loss on chromosome 9 is present at a slightly higher frequency, as visualized by the decrease in log R. When we examine optical mapping data to the right, the C and V plots for 9 and 12 show similar results to microarray, indicated by the black bar, and both appear close to a copy number of 0. The biggest difference between these two, two calls is size. The loss at 9p to 1.3 is over 1.2 megabases in size, while the loss at 12p13.2 is only 250 kb. SNP array breakpoints suggested only a partial deletion of the ETV6 gene. This, along with the lower frequency observed by microarray, could explain why FISH did not detect a homozygous deletion the same way it did for CDKN2A. Case 4 is a 21-year-old female with AML who is post-transplant. Male and female genotypes were identified, as indicated by the X and Y surface plots, representing both patient and donor cells. The MLLT3, KMT2A fusion, and the loss on chromosome 11 are also displayed. And here's the CMV plot with whole chromosome 11, showing the interstitial loss at P15.1. These findings all correlate and elucidate the complex rearrangements seen by karyotype. Case 5 is a kidney mass from a 5-month-old suspected of Wilms tumor. Optical mapping did not detect the copy neutral loss of heterozygosity on chromosome 11 as expected, but did identify a translocation event between chromosome 11 and 14, elucidating the derivative chromosome 14 seen by karyotype, and this was later confirmed by metaphase FISH. Although microarray findings suggested an unbalanced rearrangement as well, optical genome mapping was able to identify the event in a single assay without additional confirmative testing.
In summary, optical mapping showed 100% concordance with karyotype and fish and 88% concordance with microarray. If you exclude the regions of C and LOH, then it increases to 96% concordance and only misses one low frequency whole arm CNV that was likely below the limit of detection. There were 71 additional calls not previously identified. We were able to confirm about a third of these with other methodologies. After analysis, 16 of the 71 calls were considered variants of unknown significance, and three were classified as reportable or likely pathogenic. This included the chromothripsis like event, the partial XPP1 deletion, and the 11.4 rearrangement we discussed. In conclusion, filtering the CNV and SV pipeline calls for analysis with a stepwise approach allows for easier analysis while still maintaining good concordance with conventional cytogenetics. Optical mapping revealed additional copy number changes in rearrangements compared to microarray and has the potential to characterize complex rearrangements in novel abnormalities. It also has the ability to inform potential therapeutic decisions. In summary, optical mapping was a reliable method for this pilot study. Limitations to this technology is that it needs good quality, high molecular DNA. Samples that are old or degraded will likely not pass quality control. This may be a problem if clinicians wanted to add on this test several days after specimen is drawn. It is also important to understand optical mapping cannot currently detect regions of copy neutral loss of heterozygosity. I'd like to acknowledge several members at the Johns Hopkins Clinical Center of Genetics and Johns Hopkins Genomics Laboratories for their work on this project, as well as the members of the Johns Hopkins University and the Bio Nano Genomics team. The hard work and expertise of these individuals made this project possible. Thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have.